Tropical Storm Paulette has intensified significantly today. You can see here it's at 18.5 degrees north, 43.3 degrees west at this time as of 2 p.m. AST this September the 8th. So here's the storm's estimates. Winds of 65 miles per hour and a pressure of 992 millibars moving northwest at 6 miles per hour, double the speed it was at this time yesterday. It has no CDPS rating at this time because it is not expected to impact land within the next five days. As you can see, this is as of 1 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 6 p.m. UTC, and 2 p.m. AST at this time. So, let's take a look at the wind field of this storm. You can see that wind field has expanded significantly. Regardless, there's no land areas in its sights. It's not expected to be impact land any time soon. So when it comes to that, we're really not looking at too much in the way of land impacts. That wind field still fairly small, around 70 miles at most away from that center of circulation. Well, here's its distances away from land areas that it likely won't be impacting anyway from Bridgetown, the nearest piece of land. It's about 1,158 miles away from that. From Rosario, it's about 1,208. From Port of Spain, 1,366. From San Juan, 1,498. And from Santo Domingo, 1,759. So again, maximum winds at 65 miles per hour, and you can see there on satellite appearance, those convective blow-ups, it does have that curved banding that is an indication of a strengthening tropical cyclone. It's looking quite nice. You can see that forward outflow there looking quite good. Some of that as a result of shear, though. Uh, so the storm structure, not that great at this time. So we want the NHC's intensity of uh, 65 miles per hour, slightly lower pressure. But you can see ADT and RAM, we went with a compromise between those two, SATCON and AMSU at 50 miles per hour, but those are out of date. So when it comes to our explanation for this, uh, RAM is normally on the conservative side of things. So the fact that it is the most aggressive means that this could actually have a significantly higher intensity on ADT in the foreseeable future. So we're going with a compromise of 65 miles per hour for now. Here's the NHC's cone of uncertainty on the storm. Again, they're going with 65 miles per hour. You can see it's expected to be a tropical storm throughout the entirety of its life. The National Hurricane Center expecting weakening here after the short term where it could become a hurricane, according to them. The discussion saying this could possibly be a hurricane in the next 12 to 24 hours before wind shear will make it quite unfavorable and it will at most maintain its strength, if not weaken, which is the more likely solution. So, here is the rainfall in the next seven days. This is courtesy of the H Wharf, and you can see there are 32 plus inches of rain uh, being possible over the open Atlantic. Luckily, no land areas are expected to be impacted at this time. Therefore, we really don't have to worry about anything when it comes to that. When it comes to sea surface temperatures, those are looking quite good for the storm, and it's actually going to be moving into warmer sea surface temperatures with time as it does head into the central Atlantic there. But wind shear is expected to rise and therefore the storm may actually weaken with its strength and despite the warmer sea surface temperatures. So what are the chances of tropical storm force winds? Well, that's what we're looking at right now. Pretty high um, if you're near the center of the storm right now. But as you can see, as we move out, uh, land areas are not within those chances of tropical storm force winds. If I were in Bermuda, I'd be watching this because in the future it could become a bigger threat for you. But if you're in the Caribbean, as of now, this doesn't look like a huge threat. That could obviously change. Here are the chances of hurricane force winds up to 10%, 10 to 20% in some areas when it comes to Paulette. You can see Renee's come there uh, heading off of the screen right now. But the chance of hurricane force winds for Paulette, around 20% at most at this time. So what are we looking at when it comes to weather models? Well, the h one wants a hurricane. Uh, it's certainly possible at this time, but uh, I, I think it's unlikely. Uh, it definitely could do it. It's definitely unlikely when the h one predicts it. If it's going to become a hurricane, I think it's got about 12 hours to do it. And you'll see why here in just a moment. First, like, shear is rising. And shear is going to be particularly high over the next few days. Shear is going to really drop off after the 12, which is a good thing for the storm, bad thing for land areas near it. If the storm survives, it could intensify again. And we don't know just how strong it could get. Some ultra long range models are showing that it could get quite strong. Lots of uncertainty though, by that point in time. All right, well here is everything else. Sea surface temperature slowly rising as we saw before. Um, relative humidity is actually going down, so dry air could become a problem. And as you can see that track, that track is uh, really a north, northeast, a uh, northwesterly track, my bad. 
northwesterly track there. Uh, and that's generally what we're going to be seeing no land areas uh, within the next five days are expected to be impacted. Again, if you're in Bermuda, I would suggest watching this. So when it comes to a deep dive on the satellite appearance of the storm, you can see a new convective burst that's gone up recently with those minus 80s uh, really starting to show up there. CDO is looking fair on this storm right now, uh, and I wouldn't be surprised to see it continue to intensify. It looks significantly more organized than it did at this time yesterday. With that being said, thank you so much for watching, and now to your outlets. You can follow our outlets. First of all, the website, force13.com, with new articles coming out all the time for your reading pleasure about all things weather. YouTube.com forward slash force13 with our tropical weather bulletins, animations, and tropical updates. You can also find us on Facebook for more information on those things. And then also on Twitter, we have the U.S. branches and AU branches on there as well, but you can see the URL below. Teespring.com slash store slash force13. That's where you can find things like the smug mug to buy. And finally, the Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash force13 where you can support the project and help it become even better.